Thanks for listening to Car Talk. NPR has a new podcast for kids and grown-ups to listen to together. Unlike our show, which has long been used as punishment, the new show is Wow in the World with Mindy and Guy, and it gives kids and adults the chance to connect and discover the wonders in the world around them. You can find and share Wow in the World on the NPR One app and wherever you listen to podcasts. Hello and welcome to Car Talk from National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're broadcasting this week from the Religious Studies Department here at Car Talk Plaza. These are allegedly, according to Neil Jackson, who sent them to us, written by kids in religious school. Kids are great. <laughs> the Egyptians were all drowned in the desert. <laughs> Afterwards, Moses went up on Mount Sinai. <laughs> <laughs> to get the Ten Amendments. <laughs> Solomon, one of, 15. <laughs> Solomon, one of David's sons, had 300 wives and 700 porcupines. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, how often do you not really get the gist? And if you didn't really know what the words meant, you, no, make you it substitute a, a known uh, word. A word that you do know. Exactly. So, I mean, porcupines is fine. <laughs> Jesus enunciated the golden rule, which says... To do one to others, not to do unto others, but to do one. O-N-E to <laughs> others before they do one to you. St. <laughs> Saint, Saint Paul cavorted to Christianity. He preached holy acrimony, which is another name for marriage. <laughs> and speaking of marriage, most religions teach us to have only one spouse. This is called... Monotony. <laughs> it's it's good, and and maybe it's all true. And I am not going to make any editorial comment about any of them because why not? It it could get cold out. <laughs> I mean, Which one were you thinking of commenting on? The last one? None, not none. I wasn't. I wasn't thinking of commenting on any of them. Well, if you'd like to try to encourage my brother to make a comment that he regret, <laughs> you can call us the number is eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Where, where are you from? Well, you won't believe it by my accent or my driving ability, but I'm originally from the Boston area. Really? Oh. Really. Okay. But, they must have used electric shock therapy on you. Huh? <laughs> so when did you escape from the Boston area? Um, well, if I tell you, you might all come out here and drive like Bostonians. So oh, okay. I have oh. to tell you. So I have to all figure right. out where out here is. But you, I, I would have to guess that you're way out in the west, like maybe state of Washington. Um, well, I am west. West. All right. Uh, you're in Peabody. Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> west of Springfield. Yeah, west of Springfield. <laughs> anyway, yeah. what, what, what brings you to us today? Well, I have an Oldsmobile Delta 88, and mm -hmm. I call it the Beast. And uh, the other day, I uh, noticed that there wasn't a puddle under my car. So For the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Was it the first time? <laughs> well, see, all the, all the power steering fluid had leaked out, so ah. that meant I had to put more in. Oh, that's how you tell. <laughs> I like yeah. it. Well, it's an interesting car. So I, I went to open the hood, and it wouldn't open. That's just as well. <laughs> well, I want to know how you open the hood when the hood latch thing doesn't work. There's a tool you can go buy at the uh, at Sears Roebuck. It's called an air chisel. <laughs> 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 you just place it firmly against the front of the hood and just blast. <laughs> no, you can reach. You can reach up because there's a lot of room under there. You, can, uh -huh. you have to lie down on your back. What happened is the cable inside either it broke. Uh -huh. The hood release cable, or it's, or it's so rusted because you haven't opened the hood in like a year. <laughs> well, see, it, it tends to overheat when I go up the mountain, so I have to open the hood when I get up to the top. Oh, of the, so the you Mohawk need trail. to do this. This is serious. Yeah. So this is a re this is a real jalopy. Yeah. This thing. Yeah. Yeah. So air chiseling the hood doesn't sound really that bad. <laughs> 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 but you, but you can you can get underneath the, the the front of the car and you can reach up and you can actually see. Uh -huh. Where that cable attaches to the latch. 
Okay. And you may be able to squirt some penetrating lubricant on that. Okay. And if you have an assistant tug on the mechanism inside, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see something trying to move. It would okay. be good to, like, not have the engine running when you do this. <laughs> Yeah, and you should be in park. It should be in park. And yeah. you should have your life insurance paid up. I don't have any. Oh, good. Oh, I would get some. All right. Can so I interest you in some? <laughs> now, with all that information behind us, you, you need to, if you have an assistant pull on the lever, uh -huh. you'll see which way the little cable wants to move. The cable wants to move into the sheathing. Mm -hmm. And you have to move that lever that it's attached to in that proper direction. And right. when you do that, you have to you actually get up there with a little hammer and whack the thing. The hood will pop open. Yeah. Don't don't try to move the cable because that's the thing that's probably stuck. Move okay. the lever itself and that'll open the hood. So as soon as you feel it pop, then you can crawl out and get up and you then we'll be able to open the hood. And then you can add power steering. While you're under there, do everything. Add power steering <laughs> fluid, yeah. antifreeze, fill the windshield washer Put thing. in a new timing chain and water pump. <laughs> And then slam it again. <laughs> no, then when you have it open, you can spray this. You can get something, uh, what's a good lubricant like that? Liquid wrench or something like that. Okay. Liquid wrench is good. All right. Liquid you might want to clean it up first with some WD-40 and get all the junk out of it. Just throw the liquid Move wrench it back on, yeah. and forth a few times. And as my brother says, just drive it. Uh-huh. Just drive it. Um, now, I have another question about my Suburban. Oh, the, the family car. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Um, it's four wheel on the fly. Now, you need to settle a marital dispute here. One of us says that when it's not in four wheel, it's in rear wheel. And mm -hmm. the other one of us says if it's not in in four wheel, it's, it's in front, front wheel. wheel. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell us who's what and what's what's riding who, on who, this? Who was the bird braid that said it's in front wheel? <laughs> well, that that person would care to remain anonymous. That'd be you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> No, when it's when it's yeah, in two it's in, wheel drive, it's in rear wheel drive only. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, and you don't have to tell them <laughs> <laughs> because we won't. Because we won't. I mean, our lips are sealed. Okay. So, so <laughs> see you, Joyce. It. That was a stupid guess, though, Joyce. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks for calling. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. One eight 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 Car Talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Sydney. I'm calling from Red Wing, Colorado. Hi, Sid. Sid, maybe call you Sid. Sure. Red Wing, Colorado. Yeah. Well, okay. I've been admonished. I can't ask people about how to spell their names anymore. I can't ask where's Sydney, where's Red Wing. Not none of that. You Sydney. can't ask any of that. Your name is Red Wing, and you're from Sydney, Australia. What? <laughs> <laughs> so what's up, Sydney? Here's the thing. Yeah. I was driving up here to Red Wing. And uh, I was about two hours away, and I was driving about 70 miles an hour, and I heard something real awful happen to the car. Didn't know what it was. Pulled over to the side of the road, and uh, looking under the hood there, I found that uh, I, I couldn't tell what the problem was, but none of the belts were moving. Anyway, a, a couple, a nice couple stopped in their van. I thought they were going to kill me at first, but they were actually very nice. They didn't and, give uh, you a haircut, did they? <laughs> 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 he uh, told me that what I had to do was cut one of the belts just to cut it off because the whole belt system was seized up because apparently the smog converter had seized up. I thought it sounded like good advice, so I did so. Hmm. I drove the two hours uh, from that point to here safely with no power steering because that was part of the whole system. Oops. There, and uh, apparently no smog converter. And my question is... What kind of a GM car do you have? I have a Volvo, a 1980 Volvo. 18. 80 Volvo. Volvo? That's Volvo. right. You don't even have a... Well, maybe you do have a small converter. It must have been added on. Yeah, there's like the there's the alternator. The belt comes off the alternator. It goes around something, which I thought was the small converter or the air conditioning unit, maybe. The, the air conditioner. Ah, How's that sound? That sounds better to me. That sounds and more... Then it, and, then that, and then that drives the power steering. Exactly. Okay. Right. Now, my question is, is there any way to rig it so that I can get my power steering back... Um, sure. Cheaply. Oh, I think so. It's possible to put a belt that goes right from the crankshaft right to the power steering. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to go someplace where someone is willing to try 150 belts, take a few measurements, <laughs> right. and uh, order six or seven or 100 belts uh -huh. and try them until he finds one that fits. No, I mean, you, you, go to a, you go to a gas station that has, you know, the. They have them all hanging up. Right. 
Okay. And they'll try one, and they'll say, oh, that's six inches too short. And the belts are all numbers, so they know how much, you know, how to get to the one that's six inches longer. And okay. They'll, and they'll do it by successive approximations. When they figure it out, and they put the belt on, buy an extra one. Yeah. And write the number down. In fact, have it tattooed on your on your <laughs> lower lip. <laughs> yeah. Backwards, so you can look in the mirror and see it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. And that's it. It's very simple. Okay. And that, that should be fine. There'll just be no air conditioning, but uh, power steering will right. be functional. And, yeah. and the thing is that in, in a month, you're going to want to, you'll be calling us back asking us how much it's going to cost to fix the air conditioning. Yeah, exactly. Because it'll be too hot. But for the time being, you can, you can go ahead with this foolishness. Oh, thank you, gentlemen, for the advice. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thanks for calling, Sid. See Sydney. you, Sydney. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. one 888 or one 888 Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Cynthia, and I live in McLean, Virginia. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, and I'm counting on you two guys to settle a $100 bet. I have a $100 bet riding on you. Yeah. Please give me the right answer. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on well, a second, you know, Cynthia. That is the standard bet around here. Whenever someone makes some statement that we... <laughs> 94. <laughs> <laughs> my brother well, uh, and I, my brother and I made a hundred dollar bet yeah. uh, recently, about and, six months ago, and I just gave him a dollar. I'm down to ninety four. No, we, <laughs> I lost the bet. As soon as someone makes any statement that is in the least bit questionable, someone else will say, "Oh, that's bogus." Do you want to bet a hundred bucks? Right. And a hundred bucks is the bet. Well, I won the last bet with my brother, and he's paying me a buck a week. So actually, <laughs> so, so far. It, after the after the thirtieth of the month goes down to change. <laughs> that is until I forget. And by the way, just to show you how honest I am, this is not down to ninety four. I was testing you. It's eighty nine. It's eighty nine. I knew that. You oh. did. I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you gave me you. ten bucks. Yeah. No, no. If you, if you had said, "Oh yeah, ninety four, that was your last dollar. <laughs> so anyway, we're, Cynthia, we're down to eighty nine. Where, where are you from? McLean, Virginia. Oh, I, Virginia. Right. I live just about six blocks from the CIA. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But they can't help me settle this bet, and I hope you can. We'll what is it? Okay, my uh-huh. boss is Mike, and he's a mechanic. You know, he's like a weekend mechanic, and he has about eight or ten cars. I don't know. He has a whole bunch of cars, so he knows a lot about cars. Yeah. Uh, well, I have one car. I I drive a 14-year-old Acura Legend, and she's in perfect shape, perfect yeah. condition. But I noticed that if she needs to have an oil change, she burns the gas really fast. Burns gas really fast? Yeah, she burns gas really fast. So usually I buy a tank of gas, and it's like 20 bucks, and it lasts me a week. But if she goes in four days, that means that, uh-oh, I need to get my oil changed. And I take it in, and sure enough, the garage guy says, oh, yeah, you got to change your oil. So I told Mike about Mike. That, that is totally ridiculous. He said, if somebody twists their ankle, you don't have to go get them glasses. They're not associated with each other at all. <laughs> and I said, but they are. I can tell in my car. And and when I have oil, when I have fresh, clean oil, then I have good gas mileage. Did you already make the bet? Yes. Did I? All right. Now, wait a minute now. Don't before you get us into trouble. <laughs> well, we're not in trouble yet. But... <laughs> My brother's going to tell you that your boss is absolutely right. And I just want to, I have, um, I have in no, my... No, no, I wasn't... Wait I, a minute. I'm, I'm trying to save you, <laughs> Cynthia. I, I have in my office a little sign. I, whenever I come up with these brilliant little insights, I always write them down so to remind me. And the one that comes to mind now is this one. Reality often astonishes theory. Oh, Isn't that good? Yeah. yeah. You know, you could employ Occam's razor here, too. <laughs> I could do this that. is what the original <laughs> bet between us was about, the yeah. spelling of Occam. But I can tell in my car, I know for a fact when I'm driving it that... So let me see. You, 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 you get, a, you get a, a full tank of gas. Right. It lasts you five days. A week. Seven well, days. Seven, seven days. Seven days. Seven it, days. But when you need an oil change... Right. goes down to four. Right. Is it... Do you happen to know if the uh, amount of oil drained out is the full amount? In other words, are you low on oil? No, no, no. They do. They change it. They change the filter and everything. Right, right. No, but no, but have you checked the oil with the dipstick? Well, Mike checks it. And and what does he find? He says that it's absolutely perfect and that I'm kind of like too fastidious about changing the oil. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Go ahead. I got it. I, I, I can hardly <laughs> wait. I can hardly wait. When you, ta- you go to a place like Jiffy Lube? No, no, no. I go to my regular gas station, if I can say the name on the air. Better. What is it? 
I go to the Sunoco gas station in McLean, Virginia, and they're perfect. They change my oil for me perfect. And you know what else they do? What? They check your tire pressure. Yeah. And at <gasps> the end of a month, your or whatever it is, your tire pressure has dropped down enough to be Ooh. coincident with your need for an oil change, and, and thus Ooh. your mileage drops off because Ooh. you have low tire pressure. Ooh. How long does it take? How and, and then they fill up your, they change the oil, and naturally as a service, because they like you, Cynthia, you've been a good customer, and you just mentioned their shop to 4 million <laughs> listeners. Right. And but they also fill up your tank, and they don't charge. <laughs> right, they, right, they give you a free tank of gas, <laughs> and they never mention it to you. <laughs> and they're driving you crazy. <laughs> well, you know that's true. They do check the tires. In fact, they all, they'll balance them. They do that for me. They do all of that. Yeah. Oh, my brother is I mean, a if, if, genius. I mean, if you lost five psi from your tires, or even a couple of them, it might be enough to drop your mileage two or three or four miles per gallon. But I just thought if the oil is dirty, the oil is dirty. No, you're crazy. No, you, yeah, no, don't, don't. You're I, crazy, I would, I would, Cynthia. Those I, would, tools... I would drop this, uh, what do you call this? This <laughs> position. position. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Off from a buck a week because you owe him a hundred bucks. But All the right. oil change itself would not be enough to do it. But adding air to your tires hmm. might do it. But you would have a hard time winning the bet on those grounds. So I think you're going to have to go for the buck a week. See if you can wear them down. Start with 25 cents for okay. By the way, I mean, it wouldn't hurt just to, to corroborate my brother's brilliant insight here. By next time you go for the oil change, yes. when you pick it up, ask them, by the way, did you put air in my tires? Well, I have to say one thing. You guys are definitely diplomatic because you've given me an honorable way to lose the bet. I don't, I, think it, it. I don't think it's honorable. No, I don't think Mike's going to be so kind, but good luck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you, Cynthia. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. No, she's a good sport. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> All right, Tommy, now that summer's here, your memory must be warming up. Do you happen to remember last week's puzzler? I don't think my memory's up to operating temperature. You know what you need? A blockhead heater. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. Well, the road is steep. The brakes are old. So you say, You put them on down and shift them in low. And you hope that powder cake don't blow. Well, you can't run away when your number is up. And it's your turn to drive that dynamite truck. And even though little old ladies stomp on their miracle ears whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and we're here to talk, of course, about cars, car repair, and uh, the answer to last week's puzzler. Okay, go ahead. This came from Rob, somebody or other, who, who used to work for Applied Logic, because that's what his email address says. And I'd say used to, because I'm sure he's since been fired for writing personal email on company time. Of course. Anyway, he, he writes, My wife owns a 92 Olds Achiever with a quad four engine, five-speed manual transmission, and power everything. One morning, as she's headed to work, she comes back into the house and says her car won't start. I go out and listen as she tries to start the car in Zippo, not even a click. She's in a hurry, so she takes my car. So I put the battery charger on her car, and later in the day, I go out and I start it right up. I drive it around a bit to charge the battery. Everything's fine. The next day, the exact same thing happens. Right? She, tr she turns the key, Zippo. Yeah. I visit a website, and I find instructions for determining if there's a drain on the battery and all that. I do mm. the test. I find out there's no drain. So I go out and buy a new battery and put it in. Same problem. So we push the car out of the garage, and I jump it with my car. I turn the key, and it starts right up. Yeah. And, and I drive her car to the dealership, and she follows in, in my car. Hours later, they say they can't find the problem. So we leave it there overnight, figuring this is an overnight problem. Mm -hmm. The next day, my wife gets in with her keys, turns the key, and it won't start at the dealership, even though they said it was all right. At which point I ask her, did you just buy something for your car? She says, yes. And the question is, what did she buy that was preventing her from starting the car? I have to say that this is a... You obfuscated this one really beautifully. Well, I didn't. I mean, Rob did. You and helped. 
a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's well done. Very well done. In fact, I, I will say that you did throw in a hint toward the end there that was unnecessary. I did? You said she got in the car again with her keys. And the, 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 you didn't have to say that. You just said she got in the car and it wouldn't oh, start. Oh, see, you see, I, you could I, have been even more. I really obfuscated <laughs> it because you got the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It was a red herring. <laughs> what she had bought for her car on Rob's applied logic Let me guess. Card. Air freshener. Floor mats. Floor mats? Yes, way back in the beginning, like about an hour ago, I mentioned that she had an old Achiever with a quad four engine and a five speed manual transmission. And because she has a manual transmission, oh, I love she it. has attached to her clutch pedal. You didn't mention that she was short. I didn't mention that she was yeah, short. That would have been the hit. Unnecessary. <laughs> she has a starter inhibit switch, and that is a switch located on the clutch pedal, mm-hmm. which prevents the starter from engaging unless the pedal is depressed all the way to the floor. Right. And when she put the carpet in, the new rugs in, it prevented her from pushing the thing far enough down. But when Manly Rob, who works, did I mention, for Applied Logic? Used to. Used to work for Applied Logic, mm-hmm. got in with his big legs. Yeah. He had no trouble mashing this pedal to the floor. And, and as it was the case, the guys at the dealership didn't have a problem either. Hey, Neanderthals. Right. Lucky they didn't go right through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and when it didn't start, they just pushed the pedal even harder. Sure. And the new floor mat. So all she had to do oh, was man. cut a piece off of the floor mat or pull it back a little bit, and voila, the car started. All the hints were there. I think it's great. And Rob has a new career in the floor mat sales now. <laughs> Installation. I since think he lost his job. it's great. And who's our winner? The winner is Matt Lewis from Santa Fe, New Mexico. And for having his answer selected at random from all the correct answers that we got, Matt's going to get a $26 gift certificate to our Shameless Commerce Division. And with that 26 bucks, he can pick up a copy of our music CD called Car Talk Cartoons, The Car Talk Compendium of Disrespectful Car Songs. Why do we mention that? He could get any kind, all kinds of things. No, anyway. we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to get rid of these now. Okay. And, and this... <laughs> Is that it? Well, you can play this in your car, and it'll make that long summer road trip seem even longer than it is. <laughs> At least that's been my experience, although your results may vary. Exactly right. Anyway, I believe we have a brand new puzzler coming up in the third half of the show. Uh, oh, you're not sure if it's coming up, or you're not sure it's brand new? I'm not sure of anything. You're not sure it's a puzzler. <laughs> <laughs> so don't give up on us right now, because uh, you never know what's going to happen. But if you'd like to call us, the number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? What do you want? <laughs> well, my name is Joe. I'm calling from Huntsville, Alabama. Hey, Joe. How was everything? Oh, it's good. It's nice and sunny down here. Yeah, sure. Rub it in. <laughs> well, listen, I've got a problem with my 82 Saab. Okay. Uh, is this going to be a Saab story? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Go ahead. We're all ears. Okay. No brains, all ears. <laughs> Sometimes uh, when I go to start the car, I turn the ignition, uh, the key in the ignition, and uh, the accessories, the fuel pump all kick on, but the starter motor doesn't do anything. Automatic transmission? No, it's standard. And uh, sometimes when I hold the key in that position, after five or ten seconds, suddenly the starter motor will kick in, everything will be fine. Sometimes I have to turn the key back and forth a few times, and one of those times the the starter will come on just like everything was fine. Hmm. Other times, I have no problem at all. Uh, gee, there are a lot of things it could be. Uh, obviously, it could be the switch, which uh, I think Sobs do have problems with from time to time. Uh, but the easiest way to figure it out is to bring it to your mechanic. Will it do this reliably? No. Uh, it never does it whenever I take it to the dealer. <laughs> all right, here's what you <laughs> well, do. that's reliable then. That's buy, the way it's supposed to be. Buy yourself a test light. Okay. Okay, and you have to diagnose this yourself. You are going to run the test light to the solenoid wire on the starter. Uh-huh. And if Can you don't you know what that, that is... Have your mechanic show you where it is. Okay. And when it doesn't start, you want to see if there's current getting to the starter. Uh Uh-huh. So if there is current getting to the starter, when you're turning the key to the crank position and it's not starting, the the culprit is the starter. If it isn't, then it's probably the ignition switch. Oh, okay, great. So have them show you where to put the test light, and you'll figure it out the next time it happens. And if that doesn't work, then drive it up here and leave it with Tom for the week. He'll figure it out. (laughs) Okay, well, thank you very much. All right, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks Uh for your call. 
All right. Bye bye. One eight 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 Car Talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Scott. I'm uh, calling from Juneau, Alaska. What's up? I am trying to figure out a eco friendly washer fluid for my windshield. Ah. Huh. We were just advertising our gluten-free, <laughs> soy-based windshield washer fluid moments ago. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I mean, how would that work? <laughs> <laughs> well, it works great. It is toxic-free. It's a little tough seeing through the soy sauce. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, what's, what's wrong with soap? Soap is bad? Well, well you need alcohol, too. Because yeah. otherwise the stuff freezes. Well, this time of year it's not going to freeze. Yeah, but you got to have some alcohol for most of the time. He's in Alaska. And what's wrong with alcohol? Well, which alcohol? We don't know. Well, I don't. Know. <laughs> How do we know? What Wait. are we? What do we have? Degrees in chemical engineering from MIT? I don't know. I do. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's completely useless to me. Isopropyl alcohol. Well, isopropyl or... certainly works. Yeah. And it's good in the, in the event that you develop a zit or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, you can always <laughs> rub it rub it on those nasty insect bites. Yeah. Uh, but that's probably what's in windshield washer fluid. I don't think so. I think it's methanol. Yes. That's what it says on the bottle, and it has a big skull and crossbones. Oh, so does the isopropyl bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not to be consumed and not to be taken internally. Yeah, yeah. I'm just worried because there's so many waterways around here and all, all these great salmon. If any, everyone's pumping methanol onto their windshields, then it's getting on the streets and going out through the drains into the waterways. So. Yeah, boy. I mean, don't forget, the only reason the alcohol is in there is to keep the, the, the water from freezing. Right. Uh, so we need a fluid which doesn't freeze when it gets to 20 below zero, uh, 20 below zero, something below zero. We don't have many of those fluids that I know of. Well, here's, here's what I'd like to see you do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, you wanted, if you wanted to use just soap and water, what if you had a washer bottle yeah. that you could remove every night and bring in the house? And then during the day when you were driving it, you would have to have this device would have to somehow be fitted to your heating system with quick disconnect couplings so that the water that ran from the engine to the heater core in the car yeah. would have to go through this thing and would keep the water from freezing. Wow. Right? While you were driving the car, because it gets pretty yeah. cold in Alaska, even, even though the underhood temperature may be pretty high. And then whatever, whenever you went indoors, you'd have to take the thing. It would be like carrying a uh, it's a, pain. a lunchbox. <laughs> well, here's, what, I, here's what, I, what my thought was. I like it. Similar thought. But how about if you mounted that bottle in the passenger compartment? Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, if we, if we could arrange to m mount the bottle under the dashboard somewhere, sh we would reshape it so it would be long and thin instead of being squat. And... Uh. And then That's what my you... wife tried to do to me. <laughs> <laughs> and and then when you turned on the heater, it would not only heat up your tootsies, it would heat up this fluid. All right. But if it got frozen overnight, it would t it would take a while. To, yeah, you'd have to, to drive to like Seattle to thaw it out. <laughs> You yeah. need to be. It's get so cold at night that it would freeze up so fast you'd never thaw it out. Right. You need it so you can quickly disconnect it and bring it indoors. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you might want to wrap it with one of those insulating blankets like they have on water heaters. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could put a, build a, uh, like a, 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 a hibachi <laughs> underneath this thing with some coals. With some coals. And you could, you could put briquettes right nice. there in the passenger compartment. Yeah. I can see it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, but I do like the approach of, I don't think we're ever going to find a fluid. Right. Which is going to work. Like alcohol works. Okay. I don't think we're going to do that. Well, you may. There may be one that's more eco-friendly. Don't forget that the people who make this stuff are using alcohol because it's cheap. Right. Yeah. Well, we don't necessarily have the answer here. However. Right. But we will help you. All because right. Because on our website, we have a, a, a bulletin board. Okay. And Which usually refutes everything that we say. And but. we will put this question up. Right. And then we will get then the great minds of the world because everyone goes to that website. All President right. Carter goes to that website. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and he's a chemical engineer, you know. Excellent.
excellent. Nuclear. He's nuclear engineer. Nuclear. A nuclear engineer. <laughs> he might have some nuclear response to this. Oh, wow. All it would take is one little nugget. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never have to worry about that. You didn't want to have kids, did you? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, but see, we got all that heat. We got all that heat in the engine. There's got to be a way to use the heat instead of using well, the alcohol. Well, that's why I, sus- I s- recommend having a quick coupling so you can put the bottle back in there. Yeah, but that's he- a royal pain. That's He's in Alaska. You don't think that's a royal pain? I mean, he's just, just one more pain. Royal pain. <laughs> well, good luck. All right. Wait a minute. I got another solution. I know another fluid that doesn't freeze yeah, at, motor oil. Mi- at minus 25 mm. degrees Fahrenheit. Uh-oh. Gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spray that all over the windshield and set fire to it. What was I oh, thinking? Brilliant. brilliant, man. Hey, thanks for your call, Scott. A very thanks, interesting guys. question. Keep up the good work. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, we'll try. All right. <laughs> See ya. Bye. He, he called mostly to get us into trouble. He did, and you know what? He succeeded. <laughs> well, speaking of getting into trouble, do you know what time it is now? Time to retread the tree swing? No. It's time to play... Stop the chump! This is the part of the show where we unearth a caller from a previous show and see how things are going in the afterlife, so to speak. <laughs> what an unfortunate choice of words. Who, it, who's our uh, lucky player this week? It's Lori from Hawaii. Remember Lori? No. Give me, help, help me out here. Well, Lori called us a while back about her Nissan Pathfinder, which, and this is a clue, she nicknamed it Wobble Butt. Mm. It's a four-wheel drive car, and yeah. um, it's off-road maybe eight hours a week. And driving along the road, it feels like the back wheels of the car drive over the wake of a boat. And it sets up this rock in the rear end. And the roll in the rear end kind of causes a complimentary yaw in the front end. So the back end is like uh, uh, moving from side to side? Right. Like a giant finger has come out of the sky and just pushed on the side of the car. And then that kind of makes it feel like it's fishtailing as well. Got it. Got okay, it. Okay, excellent. When was the accident? There was no accident. Oh, yes, there was. No, I swear. You it, need a I, good accident. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that was some pretty helpful advice we gave her. <laughs> well, did, did she stick to her story? She did. No accident. And we told her that it was probably a bent axle or a seized universal joint. We didn't mention a bad tire or anything like that? We didn't. Yeah, how could we not have? Well, let's see how we did. Laurie, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Look, before we find out what happened, then I got a feeling we ain't going to like it. <laughs> we need you to confirm that we have not spoken since your last appearance on Car Talk. Is that true? Yeah, and no, also we... that the answer you're about to give here on Stump the Chumps has not been influenced by our staff, the staff of NPR, or by the giant aluminum butt stabilization device that we sent you? <laughs> well, maybe by the giant aluminum butt stabilization <laughs> device. Can you say yes to both of those questions? <laughs> but, but not by anything else, no. No, no. Okay, okay so... Was it a bent axle or a seized U-joint? Well, the good news is wobble butt has been transformed oh. from a Polynesian vibrator into a prim English made. But the bad news is you were wrong. It was um, the forward suspension arms. Really? The rear wheel had worn out bushings. Really? The trailing arms had worn out bushings. So, yeah. Uh-huh. And it was causing the thing to go thump, thump, thump. I... And it didn't make any noise, eh? No, it didn't make any noise at all. It just rocked. Boy, that's oh, boy, that's man. a tough one to figure out. And obviously, we didn't. We did. But you tried really hard. And we uh, did try. We did. Yeah. What do we get? Do we get a twenty-six dollar gift certificate? To- <laughs> we don't Wait, get anything. I got the twenty-six dollar gift certificate. <laughs> she gets the twenty-six. Oh, you do. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gee whiz. Well, we we did our level best. You well, I know. I'm sure the entire staff was full of glee. When they found out that we had given you a wrong answer, I could see them all grinning now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for playing Stump the Chumps, Laurie. Yeah, and if you hear someone you'd like us to bring back for Stump the Chumps, email us your suggestion from cartalk.com. Hey, Laurie, thanks. You bet. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, look, we have to pause right now and take a break. Oh, uh, station identification? No, station underwritification. <laughs> we'll be right back in a minute. 
his store about a hot rod hearse, got a forge and a two and a sound of curse. Who looks off in big chrome wheels and it goes so fast and I'll make you squeal. Who's around my big black Cadillac hearse? She's a sweet as a ride of rides, got suicide doors, chrome side pods, fill the media 69. Always the first one off the line and I'm cruising around in my big black Cadillac hearse. Rev up the engine, sounds fine. And even though Rip Van Winkle slaps the snooze button whenever he hears us say it, this is NPR. Thanks for listening to Car Talk. Have you heard Up First, the morning news podcast from NPR? When news moves fast, it's the quick morning update on what happened and what you need to start the day. Wake up with Up First tomorrow morning by 6 a.m. Eastern Time on the NPR One app and wherever you listen to podcasts. Ha! We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers. And we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and the, the new puzzler. I can hardly wait. You can? I can. No, you can't. No, can't. <laughs> here it is. Yeah. Let's say you have two ordinary decks of playing cards, minus the jokers. So you have a deck of 52 cards and another deck of 52 cards. Same color? Well, yeah. They're both, yeah, the backs of them are red. Red. Okay, and the other sides, the business sides, are, the same. are all the cards, aces, deuces, Got queens, etc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You take them and you shuffle them up, mix them all up as best you can. Both decks together. Both decks, you shuffle them all up. 104 cards. There you go. And then you divide them into two equal piles. Got it. Okay, so you got a pile of 52 on one side of the table and a pile of 52 on the other side of the table. You with me so far? <laughs> yeah, I can tell already. This is going to be so bogus. I can tell already. That I can just tell. I have no idea what the question is. But well, I don't I don't even know what the question is yet. All right? Well, I can tell that too. I don't know what All the right. question is. So I've shuffled 104 cards together and I've split them back into two piles of 52 each and I got one pile here on my left and one pile to my right. Okay. okay. So you got pile A and pile 2. A and 2. Got it. Okay. What are the chances that the number of red cards in pile A equals the number of black cards in pile two? That's part one of the question. And then part part two of the question, how many cards would you have to look at to be certain of your answer? Now, if you think you know the answer, write it on the back of a $20 bill and send it to. He, he's still, <laughs> he still, he's still got that stupid look on his face like, huh? Write it on the back of a $20 bill and send it to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our Fair City. Ma 02238. Or, of course, you can email your answer to us from cartalk.com. Our number, if you'd like to call us, even if you wouldn't like to call us. Wait, 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 now, wait, wait. What's, the ch- what are the, what's the probability that the number of red cards in, in the first deck pile A equals the number of black, black cards, cards in, in deck two. Yeah. And how and, many cards would you have to look at to be certain of your answer? Yeah. I like it. If you'd like to call us, our number is one eight 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 car talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. That has possibilities, you know. <laughs> Hello. Hi, this is Cami calling from Georgetown, Texas. Georgetown, Te- where's Georgetown? Um, just north of Austin. Is it? Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's become a suburb of Austin. It used to be a small town north of Austin. That but... No one ever heard of before, because I've been there, and I've never heard of Georgetown. I think you're making it up. I thought Georgetown <laughs> was in Washington, I D.C. I thought so, too. Anyway, Cammy, what's what's cooking? I have what kind 80... of SUV do you have? <laughs> um, my husband drives the SUV. I have an 88 Subaru wagon and a six-year-old son, and I'm wondering if I'm endangering him by only having lap belts in the back seat. Do I need to get my car retrofitted with shoulder belts and get him in a booster seat? Yeah, the lap belt stinks. Or should I buy a new car? Yeah, buy a new car. (laughs) Yeah. Buy a new car. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's got to have a shoulder belt. Okay. And is retrofitting it not worth it? Oh, if you can get someone to do it, but that's hard. Good luck. Okay. I mean, it's possible that Subaru might do it. They yeah. would, they wouldn't touch this. No, it's too hard. First of all, yeah, it's they just would, too you know hard they would do? They they pull your car into the service bay and they escort you right into the showroom. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll say, "Here it is, yeah, all one, done. Pick one you like." 
Yeah, no, I, I think that uh, you'd have a hard time finding someone to do it because no one wants the liability of doing it wrong. Okay. Yeah. You know, because the car was not engineered to have a shoulder belt right. in the back. See, if our mother had had this option, she would have stayed with the lap belts in retrospect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, things happen, you know. <laughs> So I should say, should I buy a newer car? I have a husband who is a shade tree mechanic. I mean, we love listening to you guys, and we try to guess how to solve the problem before you do it. I mean, he wants yeah. to work on the cars. He. What's your other car? He drives a Suburban. Of course. We live in Texas. Right, you have to. What's the state law, isn't it? It's the state law. One, one car yeah, has to be for a Suburban. Family. <laughs> right. And you love this. You love this Subaru wagon, don't I you? I love the Buy Subaru another wagon. One. Yeah, Buy another one. Buy an, another used one. Okay. Because the later ones have the right seat belts. Right. Yeah, do it. The safety of your kids is more important than a few yeah. bucks. Okay. See you, Cammy. Thanks a lot. Hey, bye -bye. Right, best of luck. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. One eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, Tom and Ray. How you guys doing? We're doing great. great. That's great. So, um. Who are, you, who are you? Oh, my name is Peter. Sorry. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Where are you from? I'm from from Gloucester this week, but uh, I'm calling from Brookline right now. Yeah, Massachusetts. I guess there's only one Gloucester. Be oh, there's one in England, and there's one here. One here, yeah. Like the others, but yeah. not as famous. No. So what's up? Um, all right, I've got a 97 Saab 900, and it doesn't take bumps real well. You know, every time I hit a pothole, yeah. um, the car really jostles, especially in the back. And now also when I dive into a curve, the, the car doesn't respond as well. I can feel the tires staying on the road, but the car seems to lurch to the left, and then it kind of catches up to the tires. When you say lurch, you mean, you mean lean? Yeah, it leans more than it used to. You know, the, the car is a, a semi-performance kind of car. Yeah. But I'm wondering, is it, is it the shocks? Is it the struts? Is it the springs? Is it? Do, do you carry a lot of weight in this car? You have a mother-in-law that... No, no. <laughs> 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 no, I gained a few pounds this winter. But, uh, <laughs> My brother's not going to have a mother-in-law very soon. <laughs> I mean, do you frequently have four people in the car? No, no, no. It's Maybe, just mostly uh, you. Yeah, it's mostly me or me and my uh, girlfriend. Mm. How big is the girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> loaded, huh? <laughs> You're supposed to say immediately, without any hesitation, she's just right. She's, yeah, she's just right. Yeah. She's right. and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> well, it could easily be the struts. Mm -hmm. But usually leaning too much into curves is not struts, but springs. Springs. And that's why I asked you about the heavy weight. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, I mean, it could be it could be springs, it could be stabilizers. I mean, it, oh but, wow! But uh, you know, if if your stabilizers were broken, you, you'd hear that, mm -hmm. uh, and that can certainly a broken stabilizer link can make the thing really lean into turns. Uh, but but don't forget, we got into trouble. Similar to a stabilizer is a trailing link, and we didn't hear noise, and that's what it was in the Stump the Chumps episode of this very week. Oh yeah, well that, that's yeah, true. Huh, but I've, huh, I've never, huh, I never, huh, I never met a stabilizer link I didn't like. <laughs> Nor have I ever met one that was broken that didn't make some kind of noise. Yeah, mm. yeah. There's no noise. I had a motor mount broken once. That makes noise. Away. That's yeah. noisy. But it's a simple matter. Whoever checks out the thing is going to put it up in the air and check the ball joints, tie rod ends, and the stab links. Okay. And and if any of that stuff is worn out, obviously you want to change it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to guess they're going to discover. First and foremost, that you need struts. Okay. What well, are struts? Are they, I mean, well, struts are shock absorbers. They're shock absorbers? Right. Oh, it's the same thing. They're the same thing, yes. except they ah. cost four times as much. <laughs> yeah. You know, back in the old days, you could go to Sears. And the labor is four times as much. Yeah, you could well. go to Sears and you could buy shocks Remember? for $19.95. <laughs> $19.95? Mm -hmm. $5.95. They used to sell them for five well, bucks. $19.95 was the whole set. <laughs> four for $19.95. For and if you came in now, mm -hmm. the, the, the fifth one, even though you didn't need it, was free. <laughs> they were going to give you a free one. You could leave it in the trunk for whatever. <laughs> you, you know, but those were the old days. Yeah, and, but and, now they're 100 bucks a piece. And, and cars have been improved the handling of cars mm -hmm. has improved dramatically but take it take it to the dealer and have them uh -huh. throw it up on the lift and check to make sure that the thing is safe any number of things could be worn out okay and don't forget it's boating season and they have you know mechanics of people too they're going to have boat payments to make so <laughs> exactly see you peter thanks a lot guys <laughs> thanks for your bye -bye. call bye bye one eight 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 car talk that's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five hello you're on car talk Hi, this is Linda from Kensington, California. With a Y? No, with an I. Oh, you're not originally from California then. 
Well, how did you know that? Because you would have spelled it with a Y if oh, you were born oh, there. Right, right, right. Now I'm originally from New Jersey. And maybe gonna, two L's. I was going to say, you had to, to be from New York. <laughs> New York and New Jersey, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. how long have you been in, in uh, California? Seems like forever. I, I Maybe 27 <laughs> years, I think. No kidding. Yep. And what lured you out there? Uh, my husband changed jobs. Yeah. And, and went out here, and uh, he dragged me kicking and screaming. But now, how do you feel about Kensington, California? Oh, it's great. It's a, it's a really pretty town. And in fact, it's kind of New england so I'm more or less assimilated. And the it's husband, right you, you, you dumped him, right? <laughs> no, he's the source of the problem today. Oh, okay. Oh, but you, I would suggest you change the spelling of your name, because everyone's going to know you're a, a, an, an alien. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like an alien. So, what's the problem with your husband? Okay, he he has agreed to abide by the decision that whatever your conclusion is today about our problem with the way that he drives. And have you agreed to? I will accept it, whatever it is, but I sure hope that it goes my way. What's it worth to you? <laughs> <laughs> does, he, does he know you're calling? He knows I'm calling. In fact, he even tried to alter his theory last night. Oh, so oh, 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 and you said, ah, ah, I ah. said, nope, we're going on the theories you've posited so far. Go for it. What is it? Okay, he drives like his foot is on a wah-wah pedal on the gas. It leaves you in the car like he'll press down and get up to like 60 miles an hour, lift up his foot off the gas pedal so it, the car kind of drops back a little and coasts, and then he gasses it again with the hitting the pedals. In other words, it's wah, wah, wah. So you're driving, and you always feel, no matter how sophisticated he gets with this technique, you always feel like a slight lurching forward all the time. You can never relax. And he says yeah. that for, well, for 10 years he denied he was doing it. Then after that, he said it was to save gas mileage. I said, <laughs> we're calling click and click. <laughs> what does your husband do for a living? Is he a nuclear physicist? It, it's sort of, we're retired. Ah, what did he do for a living before he retired? He was a currency trader. <laughs> oh. So is he right? No. No, no, but we're going to try to bring him down gently. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> good, he... good, I love it. <laughs> Do you have a mean streak, Linda? <laughs> it's the New Jersey. It's the New Jersey, well, yeah. what was the bet? I was just going to lord it over him in our house. Oh, that's good. That, that's, that, that's enough, right? Yeah. 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 No, it's not right. Is he a cheapskate? He kind of is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, now, see, uh, when, you, when you accelerate, you use far more gas than you would use if you were simply going at a constant speed. Exactly. But... That's but when you coast, you're using far less than you would use. Right. So the but question is, do you actually... Do you compensate by accelerating? Aren't you actually burning more? Because this is what... I, I mean, I know I've heard you guys talk about exothermic reactions before. And <laughs> so, Not us. <laughs> you know, the MIT part of you. Yeah, the MIT part of us. That was another person, yeah. yeah. Right. So wouldn't you actually be juicing it up more than you're getting out of the, the residual coast? Well, that's the, yes, I say, yes, you are. Oh, I win. This means I win, right? Oh, this means you win. Oh, this is too delicious. Now, do I have, do, do I have irrefutable <laughs> do I, do I have, numbers to can back I, this up? Can I write out the equations which would prove this? No, I can't. But I do know that somebody out there will do it for me. Oh, boy. But I do remember reading, you know, every once in a while, I don't know if they do it anymore, but I remember reading about these uh, mileage contests Yeah, where people who are so disposed would take cars yeah. and inflate the tires to 150 PSI. And strip the car so it weighs as little as possible. And, and then they would try to drive the car so, so as to maximize the mileage. Yeah. And some of these people with ordinary cars, you know, like uh, Chevy Impalas, were getting like 200 miles or something <laughs> right. to the gallon. How do they do that? <laughs> and the, one of the things I believe they did Floor it. was they floored it and then they coasted. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Well, were those contests like on a short distance? Or yeah, well, a... yeah. Yeah. And, it, and, and they didn't take into effect that all of the participants 
puked on themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Well, plus he has to, you know, he he can only do this within a certain range. Like you have to do it within, say you're on the highway, you got to do it within like fifty five to sixty five miles an hour. So you're constantly up and down and up and down. When I said wah wah pedal, I mean it. Yeah, it is very disturbing. Well, it's annoying, and it's also uh, it's actually damaging to the car. Oh man, <laughs> this is getting better and better. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's tough on it's tough on the entire drivetrain. <laughs> And what little, what few pennies he's saving a week, if he, if if, if even if. he is, are yeah. being completely out overshadowed, yeah, by the, the by the havoc he's wreaking on the the engine and the transmission and the axles, the CV oh, joints and all that. Boy. He's wrecking the car. Oh, yeah. he, he did he start doing this after he retired? No, no, he has always driven this way since 1960. Yeah, no. yeah. I think he's crazy, but I I know that we will get lots of mail because this is the kind of question that teases all of the physicists out of their hiding. <laughs> right, and on a perfectly flat, frictionless surface, there may be some you know some right. rationale. Right, yeah. right. And I know that all of these, especially retired physicists, are right now on the back of an envelope writing equations to prove. Us and you, wrong. Oh, no, no. But hang tough, Linda. We're in your camp. Okay, we love you guys. We'll all go down together. If we get any good mail, we'll post it on the website. Okay, thanks again. See you later. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> thanks for your call. Bye-bye. Well, it's happened again. You vaporized yet another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, bongo boy, Berman. Our associate producers are David, the Cavs of Belleville Green, and Catherine Frau Blucher, Fenelosa. Our web lackey is Doug, the Old Gray Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman, and our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor just back from his upset at the Cape Cod Cavalcade of Cutlets <laughs> is John Bugsy Lawler. Our public opinion pollster is Paul Murky of Murky Research, assisted by statistician Marge Novera. Our customer care representative is Haywood Jabuzov. Our director of allergy research is Teresa Pollinating. <laughs> <laughs> Our sexual harassment investigator is Hank Panky. Our meteorologist from the New Delhi office is Luke Autovindo. Our Elvis impersonator from the Cairo office. This is NPR.